Hey everyone, Johnny B here with Johnny B Codes. A while back, Sean Allen had a video called An App Idea Goldmine, in which he talked about how there are a ton of public APIs out there that can be used to make apps. It's a great video and I'll link in the description and if you aren't following him, you definitely should. So this video got me thinking about doing a challenge where I make a whole bunch of simple apps using different public APIs to demonstrate how you can use these public APIs to build your own apps. My goals throughout this series is to explain what an API is, how to communicate with and retrieve data from an API, the different types of authentication, different methods of making network requests, different methods of parsing data and how to utilize not just get but also post requests. And the apps are going to be uh, pretty simple as we are focusing only on a, four, a few core principles for each video. And I'm not gonna be diving deep into iOS and Swift fundamentals that do not pertain to APIs. So you can kind of think of this as more of a recipe book uh, series. Say you decide you want to use one of these APIs to build out a more full-fledged app, this can be a good starting point for you to expound upon. So let's get started. First, we need to talk about what is an API. The short semi-technical version is that API stands for Application Programming Interface. Basically, there is a bunch of code and data on a server somewhere that can receive requests for data and then it returns the requested data. A weather app might ask a weather API for today's weather. Your stock app might ask a stocks API uh, for today's Apple stock price. And today we're going to use an API to get facts about cats. So before we jump into that, let's take a look at some repositories of public APIs. I have a few links open here in my uh, browser. Um, I like this one, this is the SW API, the Star Wars API. You can get um, information for pretty much all of the uh, characters, planets, spaceships, vehicles, um, pretty much anything you can think of for the uh, for the Star Wars series. There's a Pokemon API, a superhero API, and so these are a few um, that I've used in the past that are you know specific ones. But then you also have this um, GitHub repo that I wanted to share. I think Sean shares it also in his video. Um, but this just has a ton of um, APIs listed here. You have an index, you can see all of the different categories, animals, anime, books, business, uh, just a ton. And uh, then one more that I want to show was uh, another um, kind of repo collection of public APIs that someone has put together. And I'll have links for all of these in the description. So check those out. Um, in this video, we are going to make a super simple app that makes an API request to this first API listed, the CatFax API. So go ahead and click on that. And you'll see here, it'll bring you to the uh, kind of the homepage for, for this API. And just about every public API is going to have uh, some sort of documentation. Now the quality of the API documentation will vary from API to API. Some have really good documentation, others you kind of have to go digging and experiment to figure out what you need to know. The documentation for the CatFax API is uh, pretty good. Um, so once you're here, what we want to do is go to the Start Developing. And one of the first things that you will need for all APIs is what is called the base URL, okay? And you can see right here at the top, we have the base URL for this um, API, https colon slash slash catfact.herokuapp.com. Okay, and so earlier I said that an API is a bunch of code and data on a server somewhere, right? Well, the base URL is where all that data and code lives. It's kind of the home address of the API. So that is where we're going to be pointing all of our network requests. Then we have something called endpoints, as you can see right here. And it looks like we have a couple of um, base endpoints. If we click on uh, facts, then you see that we have a few more endpoints. We have um, a get request for facts slash random. So this is going to return a random fact about cats. Uh, and then we have a few more um, 
endpoints. We can get one based on uh, specific fact IDs. We can return uh, all of the facts, um, so on and so forth. So with endpoints, uh, syntactically, we write an endpoint by appending the endpoint to the base URL. So we're gonna be using this one right here, facts slash random. So this isn't a perfect example, but I hope it helps. Uh, where I live, we have what are called cluster mailboxes where we pick up our mail. You can think of a single cluster mailbox as an entire API that you would get to following the base URL. Uh, this one could be the fax API, this one could be a weather API, and so on. At each mailbox or API, there are a lot of little doors. You can think of each door as an endpoint. The mail person, aka the API developer, has placed specific information in each compartment. When we make a request to the API for, say, a random cat fact, you go up to the mailbox and open the compartment that is the endpoint for fact slash random and retrieve the information. Some APIs require that you use what is called an API key. In this case, in our example, you would have to also have a key to open the mailbox and retrieve your information. And we'll talk more about API keys in a future video. So we know what our base URL is. We are going to be using the facts slash random endpoint to get a random fact for each time we make a new request. But what does that data look like and how do we get it from the API to our client app? We'll cover that and more in the next video. So I will see you there.